Coming to America is frequently labeled as a comedy. However, the movie is just as much an intelligent, jabbing satire as it is an effective, earned love story brought to life by both comical and earnest performances and direction. Hey everyone, this is Jan Mann, and this is a look back at 1988's Coming to America, directed by John Landis. The idea for Coming to America initially came from Eddie Murphy, who of course not only plays the main character Akeem, but also helped produce the movie. Murphy at the time in 1988 was at the height of popularity, coming off hits such as 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop, and Trading Places, the latter of which was also directed by Landis. Thus with some writing and assistance of screenwriters David Sheffield and Barry Blaustein, Landis and Murphy came together once again to create Coming to America. Consequently, the movie is a very effective comedy, and what makes the film so humorous is a combination of several factors. One is the Cinderella fairy tale esque narrative of an unassuming African prince going to New York City for 40 days to find a bride. Placing a well-intentioned, albeit naive, prince from the fictional African nation of Zamunda directly into an unfamiliar 1980s Queens, New York, and have the audience experience with him his own culture shock instantly creates a scenario for inherent comedy. Establishing character scenes of him being pampered in his palace, having his quote, royal parts cleaned, or daring to test a desire to do things for himself for a change, as opposed to people being commanded to do things for him, such as wiping his own backside, makes it all the more hilarious when he lands in New York and learns that daily life isn't quite what it is in Zamunda. On top of that, and another reason why the comedy works so well, is the movie's willingness to satirize various elements of 1980s New York City, whether it's the friendly FUs New Yorkers greet him with, or how his and his servant Simi's luggage is stolen and boastfully paraded around. It also takes jabs at 1980s culture with the Soul Glow Jerry Curl brand lampooned by way of memorable ads that run throughout the movie and how Akeem at one point ponders using Soul Glow since the girl he's interested in, Lisa, has a boyfriend who wears it and whose father owns the company. There's also a running jab at McDonald's with Lisa's father, Cleo McDowell, a man whose primary concern outside his daughter's well-being is making money and does so by ripping off McDonald's down to using similar golden arches, similar named burgers such as the Big Mick, and emulating, if not stealing, their own corporate operations. All the while the comedic timing and performances of the cast particularly Murphy and Arsenio Hall, is yet another reason why the situations and jokes land. Arsenio Hall as Simi plays very well as a foil to Murphy's character, as Simi is always more interested in getting manicures and living a lavish lifestyle, while Akeem is more wholesome and wants to break away from such long-standing and what he views to be outdated traditions his country holds. Moreover, their ability to also portray multiple different characters is also uncanny, with perhaps the most notable being the three elder, mighty sharp barbers. Their banter alongside Rick Baker's outstanding makeup resonates so strongly in both its authenticity of what a barbershop would actually sound like and the humor found therein. However, as funny and as satirical as the movie is, it also has an earned love story that unravels effortlessly between Akeem and Lisa. In fact, the fantasy arc of a prince finding his true love in a far off land is played straight by both Murphy and Cherie Headley. And by the time the movie reaches its final 20 or so minutes, it's verged into what is essentially its heart. Two characters who share a no-nonsense desire for earnestness and unadulterated love for one another. Greatest of all, perhaps, is that coming to America's greatest attribute and feat is its appeal to a wide-ranging mainstream audience. The narrative is almost exclusively about black characters in a time, the 1980s, when that was rarely the case. Yet the movie's honest use of humor and satire pointed right at American culture 
while ultimately developing a fairy tale love between two well developed, endearing characters, is relatable to almost anyone. Ooh.